Hello and welcome to a new video on my 1980 Triumph Dynamite Sprint. Back in June 2020, it was in the midst of COVID, things weren't happening, there was no car shows and I was getting a bit bored. I've been after a sprint for many years, but never seemed to have the opportunity to buy one. And a Facebook contact of mine, Scott, was in talks about selling his. So a few messages back and forwards and uh, I decided that I should go and have a look. A chap I knew was interested in my Morris Marina estate. So we agreed on a deal for that and he bought the car. I then put the money from that together with some other money I had and went up to see this, agreed on the price and bought it home. First impressions were good. I knew it needed a few jobs doing to it, but don't they all? There was quite a few stickers and stuff which I wouldn't, weren't to my taste, which I wanted to remove. But generally it was all there for the money. The clutch had gone was the biggest issue. So if you start, if the car was running, you couldn't get into gear. But if you turn the engine off, put it into gear and started the car up, the car would drive on its own without having your foot in the clutch. So something was obviously pretty bad there. The owner who I bought it off, he agreed to deliver it for me. So he bought it up from London to my house in Suffolk. And um, I took it back to the train station and he went home again. Then I dropped the car off to a friend of mine who's a mechanic who got up on the ramp, got the clutch out and found that the pin inside the clutch for the uh, clutch fork had snapped. So basically the inside of the clutch was all, well the gearbox was all fully floating. So I think it was like a 60p pin was all what was that for, got that changed. Unfortunately it cost me 300 quid to get it all done. At the same time I put a new clutch in it as well. I then carried on using it for the rest of the summer. Then late last year, when I put it back in storage for winter, I knew there was a couple of little scabs on the seals. So I went to see a mechanic of mine who did some welding for me and just asked if we can put a little patch on the back of the seal. As he started poking the patch, he said, oh, there's some seam sealer along the bottom lip of the seal. So I put it in it and then found that the entire seal had been put on with pop rivets, hadn't been welded and hadn't been, well, just hadn't been fitted properly. So I ended up having to take the entire seal off repairing the inner seal while well, that was off, patching the jacking points, patch the front cross members and put an entire new seal on it which I wasn't expecting to do. Although that does not mean the seals are nice and strong. If I can zoom out, there you go. So uh, yeah, so it went all bad. Now the car itself was registered in April 1980. And the first owners were British Leyland. Um, it was a pool car, I believe. So um, it belonged to a uni park manager and they had them for the first year or so um, as company cars. It actually started life as an automatic. Uh, that was moved to, or converted to a manual in 1991. And then went through several different hands over the years, a doctor I know of and a few other people. Um, I think in the total it was about seven or eight owners before me. Oh, uh, pretty well looked after it. It's only done now, so he's done 73,000. Um, I've got all the history to back up that mileage. It's all, uh, it's all pucker, as they say. I think around 2008 it had been restored, although obviously it's not quite as good as I hoped, as the seal wasn't held on properly. But the rest of the car is pretty good. In my ownership, I've had both front rings repaired because there was starting to bubble at the front. So I had them welded up and there's a couple of scabs on the windscreen which have been repaired. Um, and there's a dent in the front panel which was repaired at the same time. And I also had the bottom of the arch repaired and the door painted, which I think looked pretty good now. Um, the interior was redone with this sort of walnut burr or burr walnut wood, which even though it's darker than original, I actually think the suit's a bit more. But apart from the stereo, it's all pretty factory standard and original. I 
I also believe this Sprint was the first production car to have alloy wheels as standards. And I'll tell you what, they weigh nothing. You pick one of these wheels up, there's no weight to them whatsoever. Even the nuts are alloy, and have no weight to them either. Nice wheels there, when you're all polished up. The engine, which is a two litre 16 valve, was the first 16 valve production engine. Um, it was developed by Spen King in 1973, and it was a successful car between 70, four and 78 I believe in the touring cars driven by Andy Wells. The Slant 4 engine is a single overhead cam chain driven. It pushes out around 128 brake horsepower and has a 0 60 time and around eight and a half seconds which even in today's standards is still pretty nippy. So you can imagine in 1973 when these came out it was a fast car. I know they're a bit of the boy racers wet dream. They were actually faster than the Ford Escort RS2000, but because Ford are quite good at like, um, advertising towards the younger people, they were a bit more desirable. The Dolomite was always a little bit more old man, I believe. Though, realistically, the Dolomite was probably a better car. You have twin SU HS6s mounted there. Um, on my mum, I've also got a Kenlo fan fitted to keep the cooling down because they were prone for head gasket issues. Um, it's also got Evans coolant in it, which is that waterless stuff. Apparently it stops it from boiling up and keeps it cooler. Haven't got a clue if that works, but all I can say in 18 months of ownership, the head gasket hasn't gone yet. So, who knows. Let's start it up. Right. She uh, runs pretty sweet. I've had to do quite a lot of bits and pieces basically to the carb, trying to get it running properly. It still runs slightly rich and there's a bit of a sod to tick over when it's cold. Once it's warmed up, it runs quite nice. I've uh, done quite a few miles at it now, around 2,000 miles. I've not had any problems. I even took it to the Cotswolds for a weekend, doing around 600 miles. Didn't have an issue in the slightest. There's a uh, Plenty of leg room in the car. I'm five foot eleven. I can get in quite comfortably. No problem at all. Um, the drum position is quite upright, which is uh, not to everybody's tastes, but don't seem to bother me too much. You get used to it. The seats are very comfortable too. With the driver's seat in its uh, position, what was before, so my size. Again, plenty of room in the back, if I don't get smacked by the door. Plenty of room in the back, lots of room. If the door stays where it's supposed to, that's it. So again, you'll be absolutely fine. No, lots of lots of heads room in here. But actually, for a small car, it's surprisingly roomy. Even got a, even got a little armrest in the middle here as well. So uh, yeah, not too shabby. Back in the front, you've got your overdrive gearbox. Third and fourth is overdrive. You can just flick it as you drive. Cigarette lighter. You've got a choke, which it doesn't like. You have your rear fog light down here. Because this is a 1980 model, it should have one. Heated rear window down here. hazards. The uh, left go does work. That's a bit, well, that's a bit lazy, says. There you go. Bing. Um, temperature gauge, battery voltage, mile an hour. Fuel gauge, rev counter. Um, your pizza, <laughs> with your uh, choke, rear demist, all the rest of it. Although I'm not actually sure yeah, the weedy mist don't work. But you got main beam. On the side here, you have your headlights. Where is it? There you go. Side lights. 
Headlights. Horn. Indicators. Wipers. Which I suppose we're going to want to pitch one of them. Ah, there you go. You've got your. Uh, hang on, if you zoom, that's it. If I have enough fans, you've got a little triangle of doom there, but nothing. So it's more here, you don't get a lot. But can't say I drive it much in the wet anyway. Glove box. Clock. And, um, well, I've got a modern stereo in it. But all in all, there's worse places to be. If I uh, let check aerial fit as well. Oh, there's also a uh, oil pressure gauge there, which never seems to read very high. Uh, I'm sure. And I've got another wide here for the Kenlo fan as well. As well as your pastoral shelf at the bottom. And you've also got door pockets there for your smokers, as, as well as well, ashtrays, sorry. Ashtrays in the back for your children. Because obviously they all smoked in the 70s. Ugh. I did forget to add a video of the boot earlier. So just quickly. You twist your latch at the back and as you can see it's not a bad size I wouldn't say it's very deep but it does go back a fair way there the spare wheel is also inside the boots under this panel here and this side you have your fuel tank although there is it that's so all back in there and it's uh yeah, that's it. So for the size of the car, it's not a bad boot. Also, spoiler alert, I sold my Vauxhall Victor a while back. We bought this Golf GLI Cabriolet. If there's any interest, I might do a, a short video on that at a later date if you're, uh, if you're not too fed up with this one. <laughs> That's straight up to fourth, doing 50. Flick your switch, it's now dropped down to just over 2,000 RPM in overdrive. Again, if I flick it to third, or out of overdrive, should I say, it goes back up to 2,500. So, yeah, it, drop, it drops at about 500 RPM. I've fitted uh, performance shock absorbers on this. So on the front I've got GADS adjustables and on the back it's still got the SPACS adjustables which were on it when I bought it. Um, it's got standard rear springs in the back but lowered springs on the front because uh, I was having issues with the uh, giving it level. At one point I changed the... When I bought the car I had lowered springs in the front and it sat far too low so I put standard back on it again and it sat far too high but I think I've got the heightment a lot better on it now but it handles really nicely you can throw it around the bends you feel pretty safe in it it's got uniwheel tires all rounds so it's got a half decent make tire as well Can't really 
give it much beans around here. It's all country lanes and stuff. I do like the little steering wheel. To me, it reminds me a little bit of a mini. You can sort of throw it into the corners. You've got this small steering wheel. It's, uh, I think it's a, a lot of fun to drive this car. And a good thing, thank you. The good thing about it is that you uh, can quite happily drive it on a motorway at 70 mile an hour in your overdrive. And there's no issue at all. It's quite a nice little car. So the seats are very comfortable at all as well. Yeah, that's 50. Still not 100% whether I've got the carbs quite set up right. To me, I think it should be a little bit more peppy. I think there might be just a little bit flat. I know it runs slightly rich, but um, unfortunately, I'm struggling to find anybody locally who knows how to set up carbs. I've had a few people look at them, but they don't seem to be any better. But it's it's turnkey at the moment, it starts, it's reliable, so I don't, I'm a bit begrudged to be messing about with them and make them worse. RPM 55, trying to fourth. We're now doing 70 at 3600. Flick it up 70 at 3000. Bit of wind noise, is it rattly? But it's a 40, yeah, 40 year old car, so it's gonna be a bit rattly. Second gear, here we go. If we all start complaining, I don't do that very often, but just to show you how easy they are to kick set rounds. That's your second gear, it's a little bit of throttle, and it just slides itself around. And there you go, back 70, back into overdrive again. So there you have it, my little road test of my 1980 Triumph Dynamite Sprint. I hope it wasn't too boring for you, I'm not particularly great at these videos, but several people asked me what I've been up to, and I thought, well, so don't be too harsh on me. But there you go, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it, and it wasn't too boring for you, and um, I'll see you next time, bye bye.